Hi, Storytime lovers. Do you like to be independent and do things yourself? And do you get frustrated when a grown up or someone bigger than you doesn't let you do things yourself? Well, today's story takes us to the big black woods into a little dark house where we meet two friends, Mouse and Bear, who are having breakfast. They are the best of best of friends. But Mouse has decided to go to the moon and make his own moon map, and he doesn't want Bear's help. Would you want help if you were setting off on a moon map adventure? Or would you lean towards team adventure? As always, before finding out how Mouse manages with his marvelous moon map, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the author and illustrator who are both fantabulously talented and I hope to give you lots of ideas for your next reading list. Teresa Heapy, the author, has recently released The Wonder Tree about a mummy owl who tries to comfort her baby owl and she has also written the wonderful collection Very Little Princesses, including very Little Sleeping Beauty, Very Little Rapunzel, and Very Little Cinderella. And now, for David Litchfield, the incredible, exceptional illustrator and author of the Bear and the Piano trilogy, which I'm sure you've read. And if you haven't, rush out and get a copy. And he has illustrated so many other stunning books like Rain Before Rainbows, A Shelter for Sadness, and Lights on Cotton Rock. All the references are, of course, in the description box below. And now, let's take a walk in the deep black woods. Mouse and Bear lived in a little dark house in the big black woods, and today, Mouse wanted to find the moon. I'm off to the moon, Bear, said Mouse. On my own. I'm making a moon map to show me the way. Mouse, said Bear, why don't you sit down? I'll help you pack up and then we'll set off together. No, Bear said Mouse firmly. I don't need your help. I'm the moon map inventor. I'll go on my own. Mouse worked on his moon map. He planned and he thought. He watched and he wrote. He read and he tweaked and he measured and drew. It was a magnificent, mighty, most marvellous moon map. Right then, said Bear, we'll need torches and jumpers and gloves to keep warm and a hot flask of tea. All I need is my moon map, said Mouse. Are you sure? murmured Bear. Oh, yes, Bear, said Mouse. I know the way now. I'll be back before tea. So Mouse set off on his own, on his way to the moon. He looked at his moon map. He tunneled, he climbed, and he clambered up into the woods. Now, Things moved in the woods, things fluttered and scraped and rustled and sighed there. Moon map, show me the way, whispered Mouse, but all he saw was the dark. And then came a crunch, a snap and a whisper. Eyes flashed in the shadows and bent towards Mouse. I can go on my own, breathed Mouse. On my own, on my own, 
went out came bear. Hello, mouse, he said. Need a hand? Mouse stumbled. No, bear, I don't need your help. But it's so very dark, I can't see my moon map. I know, mouse, said bear. But I've got you, and you've got me. So, we'll be all right. So Mouse felt his way, and Bear followed Mouse, and they crept through the blackness and out of the woods. And there was the fat moon, trailing milk in the water. A long glitter of water swept out before them. Mouse stopped. Bear, look at the moon map. We've got to go over, but it's too far to swim. I know, Mouse, said Bear, but I've got you and you've got me, so we'll be all right. Bear looked at the moon map. He looked very closely. Then he folded it up. Bear bent it in triangles and pressed down the edges. He tweaked and he tucked and he lifted and opened. He stroked and he smoothed and he flattened until Mouse's moon map was a little fat square. Bear, what have you done? said Mouse. Now we really are lost. Pull, Mouse, said Bear. Pull. So Mouse pulled, and Bear pulled, and the square of map opened, grumbled, and grew, and there was a boat. Just right for two. Come on, quick, jump in, said Bear. For all of a sudden, a storm and a wind were above and around them, shaking and spinning and swirling the boat. Mouse shivered. Bear, we can't do it. The waves are too high and the boat is too small. I know, Mouse said Bear, but I've got you and you've got me, so we'll be all right. All through the night they held tight to each other through the wild and the wet and the world of the storm, and at last the wind dropped. It left them, but so did the moon. Bear, it's going, said Mouse. The light's disappearing. My moon map was all wrong. No, look, Mouse, said Bear. Your marvelous moon map took us here to the sun. The sun stroked the air with fingers of warmth and the sky glowed in pink, purple, orange and gold. It tickled their ears and brushed warmth on their necks. It stretched out their arms and put breath in their tummies. We missed the moon, but we found something better. Bear, shall we go home now? said Mouse. Oh yes, Mouse, said Bear. But do you know the way back? We don't have your moon map. I don't know, Bear, said Mouse. But I've got you and you've got me, so we'll be all right. The End 
Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this story, then you are in luck because there is another mouse and bear adventure called The Spectacular City. Hopefully, I managed to do this wonderful book justice, but you can also listen to the author and illustrator in a marvelous reading and a marvelous draw along, and they will help you make your own paper boat by clicking on the link in the description box below. Please leave me a comment and visit my Instagram page. Take care, read on, and see you soon.